Welcome to Strider Tree Gear and our part three on the Essential Knot series. Here are a few different anchoring knots. They, they make loops, they anchor objects to one another, similar to a bowline, except these are, can be used for life support as they're not going to come free. So come with me, we'll check it out. So first I'm gonna start off with the figure eight. The figure eight is a, a good anchor for your harness or for the end of a basal tie. Uh, it is a life support rated knot. It maintains a very high percentage of the rope's minimum breaking strength. And if you have a carabiner to attach to the end, you don't need to actually tie the anchor around something that is fixed, then it's very easily done. So I'll demonstrate that first. You take a bite of your rope, you go around, all the way around once, and then push it through the, the gap in the middle. You cinch this off, make sure all of the, uh, the strands are laying parallel to each other. You don't want any crossing over and you actually tighten each one individually nice and snug. And it's that tightening of it, each one individually, that actually makes this easy to untie. If you don't do that properly, then if you were to take a large, a large hard load, then they tend to jump and each other and bind and make it hard to untie. So this, you can climb on all day and it'll still come free. So now if you need to tie your figure eight around something like this fixed ring, you just have to tie a, a figure eight in the rope first. So I'm gonna do that. So we'll do the, just, just that's just a standard figure eight knot. Some call it a figure eight stopper knot. So if you wanna, you know, it can act like a stopper, but we'll leave it a little bit loose. So you got your figure eight knot and then you could pass the other, the end of your rope through the ring this is great for attaching to your harness. This is how the rock climbers do it. And then you follow it back, paralleling uh, the strand that went through the knot initially. So I'm gonna try and tie it backwards here so you can see. I'm gonna follow this strand all the way back around to tie this knot. Around back up here, back around and through. Now we've got to make sure it's dressed and laying flat. Now we've got that anchored to this in a you know semi-permanent permanent way. Same thing, pull all of these individually, make sure it's nice and cinched tight and there's no crossover like that. You've got to fix that so when you go to dress it. Fix that crossover right there. All right, now we're better off all the strands laying flat and parallel to each other. That's a figure eight, good way to anchor. I don't use it very often, honestly, because it takes too long to tie and I find it annoying. And I use carabiners for everything. So it's not very often I need to tie a loop on the end. So what do you do when you don't have an eye on the end of your rope? Ah, you get an eye on the end of your rope. Don't waste time tying knots, have an eye on the end of your rope. But assuming you don't, maybe you cut it. Cause it's always the end with the eye that gets cut first, right? Gosh, I hate that. Well, here's how I tie carabiners onto the end of my rope. Got the carabiner on there. My go-to knot is called the fisherman's termination knot. I like it because it cinches down really tight and it tends to lock the carabiner in place on the rope. And, and that's nice because it keeps it oriented properly. So that's how that's tied. Walk that through one more time here. Got it through the, through the carabiner. Gonna wrap it once around the rope cross it over itself, wrap again around the rope, and right where that second crossover would be, you push it down through the middle. And then you cinch it off. When I pull on this, it's gonna cinch nice and tight around the rope. So you've got a cross over here, and then parallel the rest of the way. It's a, another reason I like this knot, it's got a very distinctive look, and you can always tell if it's tied wrong. This will cinch up really tight on that carabiner so that the carabiner doesn't flop around. And that's kind of nice because it keeps it oriented the right way and it's less likely to get caught over the gate. Now, you can back up your knot here. I don't think it's necessary. This knot doesn't work itself loose. If you get it good and tight, it's safe. So this is the fisherman's termination knot. The other great thing about it is when you go to take it out, all you guys take the carabiner off and then you pull the whole knot out just like that and it comes free. Great knot. Another one is called the anchor bend. I don't use this one as much, but it is also a life support rated knot. You could pass it through the carabiner once, 
pass it through the carabiner a second time. So you've got two wraps on the carabiner. And then you're gonna take it around and back through both of those loops and cinch it off. This is another one where you would want to tie off the end of your rope, but it's nice in that it cinches pretty tight around the carabiner and tends to not let it shift around much. So this is a life support rated knot. So we've got the anchor bend, which is this guy, the fisherman's termination knot, and the figure eight. One last knot I wanna show you on the same thread of if in fact maybe you accidentally nick your rope, no one ever nicks their rope, but if you did, one of the ways you can isolate damage in your rope, say I got a nick right here, is this knot called the alpine butterfly. Now I use this knot all the time. I like to use it for making handholds for guys on the ground pulling. I like to use it for attaching pulleys occasionally. It does bind up a little bit if you pull on it really hard, but generally it's fairly easy to undo. There's a few different ways to tie the alpine butterfly. One of the simpler ways is this method. You take one, two, three wraps around your hand, all go in the same direction, then you pull out the middle wrap, put it underneath the outside wrap towards your fingers, and then around all of them together. When you cinch that out and you go to dress the knot, it makes this beautiful symmetrical knot. A little crossover on this side, uh, crossover on that side, parallel strands on this side. Crossover here, parallel strands, a couple of wings, and a loop. Now, this, you can climb on this strand and this strand. You can weight this way, and this will isolate your nick in the rope. So it's a good way to kind of do that. It also makes for a good stopper knot if you're using it for a canopy anchor, like in that canopy anchor video I've got on my channel. A lot of times I'll take that extra carabiner after doing this, lock that off, and now this can't possibly come loose and you've got this great stopper knot. This is called the Alpine Butterfly. So I'll show that one more time. We've got three wraps, one, two, three wraps around my hand. Pull the middle one out, get a good bunch of slack in there. Under that one, around all of it. And dress it up, it comes out. The way I typically tie this though, that's the one way to learn it. The other way I like to tie it is I will take a bite with my right hand. I'll just pull a bite out and I, and I hold the, my left hand with my middle finger in between the two strands and I flip it once and then I fl oh, sorry. flip it once, flip it twice. And now I've got this gap in the middle. I've got this hole right here. And if I take my loop and I go around the whole strand and then pull it through that hole in the middle, then it ties the same knot. I'll show that one more time. I know it's a little bit hard to see. I'll try and get that out of the way. I'll try and reverse my hands here. So I've got a loop or a bite. Flip once, flip twice. Um, and I will stick my middle finger in here. So it's got this gap around the whole rope and then through that middle hole right there that we created with those two, rat, two loops. There's another method for you. There's lots of methods online. Alpine butterfly is a pretty common knot. And as far as stopper knots go, I've got one more stopper knot for you. I tie this at the end of my lanyard so that my lanyard can't come off. I tie it at the end of my climb lines so that my climb lines don't slide through the end of my hardware. It goes like this. Here's the, the tail of your rope. It's a lot like the fisherman's termination knot. I'm gonna go one wrap around, two wraps around, and then back through itself. Got the crossover and then parallel strands all the way around. That's the fisherman stopper knot. Works great. This won't slide through. Makes for a really solid uh, stopper knot for all sorts of different systems. Fisherman stopper. So there you go. There's a few life support knots for your toolkit. So thanks for joining me here at Strider Tree Gear with my intro knot series. All these knots are super useful, but 
Practice them at your own risk, practice them low and slow, make sure you've got it tied right and make sure you have it checked by someone who knows what it's supposed to look like as you're learning. You know, your safety is in your hands. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you found some value. Uh, if you enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what knots you love. If there's a reason you don't use one of the ones I demonstrated, I'd love to hear it. And uh, I'll catch you next time at Strider Tree Gear. Thank you guys.